Let's talk about workflow on the Sony Venice. If you've worked with the F55, the workflow is going to be almost identical. No matter what NLE you're using, whether it's Premiere or Resolve or Avid, whatever it may be, those are already fully compliant with the codecs that this camera records. And the same goes for color grading, whether you're using base light, color front, Resolve, whether you're working in an ASUS workflow or whatever, those are all fully up and running with the codecs that this camera shoots. The 15 plus stops of dynamic range that the Venice can capture when you're shooting in 16-bit linear raw or in 16-bit XOCN, colorists say that it looks very much like film, that it grades very, very similarly to film. They love it. And if you're working in HDR, then that's definitely something you need, and colorists have been impressed by how well this grades in HDR. The color space of the camera, by the way, exceeds Rec 2020, so it's actually a larger color space than what's required for HDR. And of course, you may or may not know that 16-bit, that exceeds the ability of the human eye to even see it, so we have a lot of firepower in here. The Venice can record internally on S by S cards, which have been around for an awfully long time, and of course those record in XAVC, MPEG HD, and many flavors of ProRes. So no matter what it is you're gonna be editing in or transcoding from, you have a lot of flexibility there. The R7 RAW recorder, which bolts on the back here, it records onto solid state cards. This is a one terabyte one, and it records in that 16-bit linear RAW or 16-bit XOCN. XOCN stands for Extended Original Camera Negative, and Sony designed this sensor and the recording codex to mimic the look of shooting negative film. The great thing about XOCN is that your file sizes are much, much smaller than if you were recording just the straight 16-bit RAW. We're talking 140% more record time on a card, about 60% faster transfer speeds. So that's gonna save you time and money on the set at the end of the day, making dailies or transcoding. That's gonna save you time in post as well because your files are smaller and they're working faster. In XOCN, all of your metadata is there. All it's doing is compressing that file. And, and I don't know what it is you're losing aside from file size. I've seen the tests from uncompressed to the most compressed, and it is visually lossless. So XOCN is a pretty amazing tool. With the R7 recorder and the internal recording, you can also record simultaneously. So you could be recording RAW or XOCN, and at the same time be recording XAVC and some sort of proxy so that you don't have to make proxy dailies at the end of the day. You just take that card and hand it to your DIT or data wrangler and you're off and running. Sony's Catalyst Browse and RAW Viewer have been around for quite some time now, and those are both fully compliant with the RAW and XOCN footage coming out of this. So you can use those to look at footage, to do color grades, to do transcoding. All that's good to go. Also, there's a new Thunderbolt card reader. It's one of the fastest card readers available. It transfers at eight gigabits per second. So even though the Venice is a built from the ground up, brand new camera, never anything like it before from Sony, the infrastructure, the workflow, these are all things that have been around for quite some time. So no matter what you're recording, whether it's XAVC or to the XOCN or RAW, you hand that to your editor, you hand that to your color grader, you're off to the races.